All right, my name is Roger Cedars. In this short video, I'd like to show you how to install a pre-shaped cart grip like this onto a blank to create a fine casting rod handle. You know, in my opinion, cork is to a fishing rod as leather is to cowboy boots. The first thing you need to do is mark the spine or what I call the natural bend of a rod, rod blank. You need to set the butt end on a smooth surface, flex the rod and rotate it, and it will jump into a pronounced curve. Then if you have a buddy, mark the inside of that curve. Now we mark the inside of that curve. Now this is a casting rod. You want the rod to bend the easiest towards the fish. So on the casting rod, we put the guides on the outside of that curve, opposite your mark. Okay, the next thing we need to do is cut our grip to eight and three sixteenths. That, that, that'll end up with an eight inch grip. All right, there's a lot of ways to cut this grip to length, but I like to use a chop saw. But if you don't happen to have a chop saw, consider using a hacksaw with a fine tooth blade. Now we have our grip cut to length. So the next thing we need to do is we need to cut this grip down just a little bit so it'll go up inside that reel seat, just like that. I have one here that I did earlier, and you can see that little shelf right there that, that will slide right up in that reel seat to make a really nice, good fit. We slide it onto our mandrel, covered with masking tape. I tear off a little piece of sanding belt uh, that has a stiff back to sand this shoulder, maybe 60 to 80 degrees. It's about 3 sixteenths wide and about 3 30 seconds deep. This little lay setup that we make makes it quick work. Pull it off the mandrel and it fits really nice on the reel seat. Now if you don't happen to have a lathe, you can use a file like this, a little mill file, and you put about three layers of masking tape right here to line up with, and this is 3 16 of an inch, and then you start filing it just like that, and you work it down right up against that tape, work your way around that, and you can do a really good job with a hand file if you're careful. Okay, the next thing we gotta do is to ream this uh, rear grip and foregrip to fit the blank. And one of the things that I do is I use a reverse pilot bit uh, to bring this out from 5 16 to 3 8 which doesn't sound like much, and that isn't a whole lot, but it still helps to keep it on center. Slide it onto our drill, and notice we have two bushings of masking tape on here that match the inside diameter of that grip. We chuck it up in our drill, and we We pull it halfway through because it chatters when it comes out. So we'll flip it around and run it in from this side. Okay, now we've rimmed it out. Now this is really more important on larger diameter blanks. Okay, we also have to do that to the foregrip. We're going to ream it out three eighths. It's got a hole that's just a hair bigger than a quarter. So we're going to take it out to three eighths. And it's got a bushing that matches the inside diameter of our foregrip. Now we don't go all the way through because I don't want to bust out that cork on the other side. So I'll stop right there. So I've got it reamed out a little bit bigger. Looks good. It's on center. That's the most important thing. Now the next thing is we've got to ream out our cork to match the blind. Okay, so I, I, I never run it, you know, it looks like to me that I can go in about another 15 inches, but I only go half that, half that at a time, because you can't ever tell how it's going to go. Okay, we slide this onto our blank. Wow, it fits really, really good. Nice and snug. Tight on both ends. Okay, now we have a reel seat that comes in different sizes. I have the reel seat to fit this blank. So I'll we'll slide that down. Okay, 
and slide it up on my little cut that I made. I'm going to take the foregrip and ream it out. It's right on center. It looks really, really good. Okay. Well, man, I don't need to ream it much. I, I've got to be careful there. So I just need to ream it about another inch and a half. Oh, that's perfect. That is perfect. So we're ready to go. Next, uh, next step is to glue this baby up. I'm going to use five minute epoxy to glue the rear grip on. I'm going to let it set up for about 10 minutes before I glue the real seat and the foregrip. So let's start out by measuring equal portions. So we'll squirt out the B first, a pool about the size of a quarter, the A second, equal in diameter, separate but equal in diameter is that first part you squirted out. Then we take a popsicle stick and mix that up real good. You mix it up a lot different than finish. You mix it up, you know, whip a lot of bubbles into it. I like that and just mix it very thoroughly. Okay, so I take my blank, take my grip, and I want to put some epoxy a little further up the blank than my grip is going to go. Okay, I take my grip. And I slide it on that rod blank. And I bring it down. Okay. Okay. I, I, I move it a couple times. Let that glue work their way in there. Slide it down. And I wipe that glue off the bottom. And remember, I put a little bit of glue up in this area so that you get some all, all the way up in there so it, the grip doesn't push it all the way down. And I'll clean that up. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes since we glued up that rear grip, and I came over here and checked my five-minute epoxy, and it's set up good. Uh, I'm going to tear that page off. I'm through with that, throw it in the trash, and uh, I'm ready to glue my rear seat and foregrip. Now, I'm going to glue it with five-minute epoxy. The disadvantage to five-minute epoxy is it sets up fast, and if you're not used to doing this, it's a little bit hard to get it all cleaned up before it starts setting up. But I've done a lot of them, so I think I can do it. I'm going to go ahead and use five-minute epoxy. So again, I'm going to mix up my glue the same way. Okay, that's looking good to me. Okay, the first thing I want to do is on this little place we turned down that that real seed is supposed to go on to, I'm going to put a very thin coat of that, that glue on that. Just very thin. Okay, now... I'm going to put more on the blank here that's going to catch that reel seat. That reel seat fits pretty tight on there. You know, it doesn't take a whole lot to glue that reel seat. That's, that's, that thing goes, when it goes on there, it's on there. Okay, I slide that on my blank. Okay, I slide my reel seat down. Keep my fingers out of the bot, that little hole in the bottom of that reel seat. That look, you're looking good to me. Slide it into place. Okay, I line my trigger up with the mark that was the inside of the natural bend because that's the inside of the curve. This is a casting rod, so I want, it, I want the guides on the outside where it bends easiest towards the fish. Okay, I got that. I got a little paper towel here to wipe off a little glue that came out at that little spot where your finger touches the blank. Drop that in the trash. Now I'm ready to glue that foregrip. Get it a little further up that, get it a little further up that blank. You have to clean that off. Okay, now I'm ready to put that foregrip on. Because I'll show you one thing that's important to me. As I slide that down, and you see that if that glue starts building up too much, you see it building up a little bit too much? Okay, then I push it back out of the way just a little bit. And I take my paper towel and wipe that little gob of glue off there. Just a little bit of it. Slide that down, and then you don't have glue oozing out all over. You want to take a, a little bit of alcohol, and you want to wipe off that front of that blank a little bit where you had a little extra glue up there. You want to look around and see if, if your glue ran out anywhere. Don't see anything. That looks really good and tight. 
That looks good. Now I want to make sure that this right here is really clean under the bottom of that reel seat where, where that blank is exposed. Got that cleaned off real good. Now I'm going to double check. I'm going to double check and make sure my trigger is lined up with that natural bend, the inside of the curve. The, the reel will be on the top. The guides will be on the top for my casting rod where it bends easiest towards the fish. In about 10 minutes, that baby's gonna be dry, pretty dry, and it needs another six or eight hours to totally set up. I don't glue my butt cap on until after I finish wrapping the rod because this particular foam butt cap, well, you can damage it by putting it into a chuck, so I leave it off. I wrap the rod before I uh, uh, put on the butt cap. My name is Larry Potterfield, I mean Roger Cedars, and that's how we do it. You know, a lot of guys watch TV, they're going to know who Larry Potterfield is.